Hello, and welcome to episode 4 of Chris Boyle Didn't Know That, a podcast where I'll be learning a few things I didn't already know, and possibly a few things that I didn't want to know. This week takes us to a sophisticated jazz club somewhere in downtown Warrington, I suppose. Somewhere classy. Somewhere with an Ikea. Somewhere where men are men and women are women and anyone who identifies as neither specific gender is equally respected because it's the 21st century and gender is fluid. And you're just going to have to get used to it or else you can fuck off back to Craggy Island. There's a thick smell of Russian tobacco in the air because someone has just set fire to a Russian and the cigarettes are in his pocket. Four musicians riff on a stage in the corner. None of them can read music and you can tell as they try to torture a tune out of their second-hand instruments. The drummer attempts a solo, his sticks rattling across his snare and cymbals. He comes to an abrupt stop as he hits the bass drum and slumps across his kit. That's when the kazoo player realises it wasn't an improvised drum solo but simply an all-too-frequent angina attack. And as the ambulance arrives, the music fades down in the background and we find ourselves fully ready for the latest edition of Chris Boyle Didn't Know That, with a reminder that if you would like to record me a copyright-free theme tune for absolutely no fee, details of how to get in touch are at the end of the podcast. Episode 4, then and I'll be casting my bespectacled eyes over a woman who I suppose first really came to my attention in the 1990s, a woman who made it her mission to rid the airways of filth, Mary Whitehouse. Founder of the National Viewers and Listeners Association, she opposed social liberalism and the mainstream British media, and accused it of encouraging a more permissive society, particularly in relation to sexual freedom. She made her position on this very clear, and that position certainly wasn't reverse cowgirl. She didn't like swearing, she didn't like shagging, well, not on the TV anyway, and she had a 1990s comedy show named after her. She must have been fucking fuming. She was born Constance Mary Hutchison on the 13th of June 1910 and died on the 23rd of November 2001, aged 91. And in her honour, I will attempt to make this the filthiest podcast so far. The last thing that I'd wanted to do is approve. Mary qualified as an art teacher in 1932 and taught at Litchfield Road School for eight years. Life drawing was presumably restricted to bowls of fruit so long as the bananas and plums were not arranged in the mandatory cock and balls configuration. There appears to be no truth in the rumour that I've just made up that Mary once went ballistic when an overripe fig burst open, spraying seeds and juice everywhere. In 1935, she joined the Oxford Group, which went on to become Moral Rearmament in 1938. MRA's founder, Frank Buchanan, believed that military rearmament in Europe was not enough to counter the crisis that was building. A moral recovery was also needed. I'm not sure if there have been many books written about the role of moral rearmament in defeating the Nazis. It seems perfectly reasonable, though, that Hitler was probably driven into his bunker in the final months of the war because someone in Wolverhampton was tutting at a gentleman who'd left the house without a handkerchief or that an unmarried woman of 28 had been tarred and feathered because she'd dare show an inch of ankle on a Sunday in full sight of the parsonage. After taking a break to have children, Murray returned to teaching in 1953, the same year that she broadcast on Women's Hour and wrote an extensive article on homosexuality for the Sunday Times. This article concerned, and I quote, how a mother might best avoid inadvertently pressuring her sons towards that particular orientation inadvertently pressuring. How is that done exactly? Mum, I'm just nipping out. Where are you going, dear? I'm off to meet Daphne for a quick walk round the duck pond. No, Geoffrey, you're not going anywhere until you've sucked all the juice out of the saveloy that I've given you for your dinner. But Mum... Every last drop, Geoffrey, and don't spill any down your chin. Make sure it's all down the back of your throat. The article was so popular it became a pamphlet probably not called How to Avoid Raising an Accidental Gay. In 1960, she began to teach art at Maidley Modern School and also took responsibility for sex education. 
I'm assuming every lesson was simply entitled Keep Your Hand on Your Aimney, with bromide refreshments during the break. Whatever happened in those lessons, Mary was shocked at the moral beliefs of her pupils, and blamed this on declining moral standards of the British media, and especially the BBC. And she's not wrong. Big Black Cock has got so much to answer for. In January 1964, with Nora Buckland, she launched the Clean Up TV campaign, with a manifesto appealing to the women of Britain. The Director General of the BBC at the time, Sir Hugh Green, not to be mistaken with oddball Opportunity Knox host and secret father of Paul Yates, Huey Green, became her bête noire, French for black beast. I told you she was obsessed with big black cock. Mary thought the BBC loaded its programmes in favour of new morality. In the Catholic Herald in 1965, she complained about a TV programme where a girl asked a clergyman, do you think fornication is a sin? And he replied, it depends what you mean by sin and what you mean by fornication. So, there you have it. Confirmation that God may or may not be okay with a quick blowjob behind the bins at Asda. Or, at the very least, would have to check with Susie Dent from Dictionary Corner off of Countdown on the exact dictionary definitions. I'll have two from the top and one from the bottom. Thank you, Rachel. In 1965, the CUTV, if only she'd called it the Clean Up Naughty TV campaign instead, was replaced by the National Viewers and Listeners Association, and Mary wrote frequent letters to the Prime Minister of the time, Harold Wilson. She wrote that often that apparently Downing Street intentionally lost the letters so that they didn't need to respond to them. Mary didn't like a lot of things, and will now just concentrate on a couple of those things. Firstly, she hated Till Death Us Do Part, and it's safe to say that the writer Johnny Spate wasn't that keen on her either. She objected to Alf Garnett's profane language, stating, I doubt if many people would use 121 bloodies in half an hour, but then again, clearly, Mary White's house never visited my house whilst I was growing up in the 1980s. In 1967, Johnny Spate had to apologise and pay out substantial damages after implying that the National Viewers and Listeners Association were fascists. But ultimately, he had the last laugh, when during one episode, he had Alf read Mary's book, Cleaning Up TV, and agree with every word of it. She tried to get Chuck Berry's My Dingaling Band showing, once again, her obsession with Big Black Cock, and Alice Cooper sent her a bunch of flowers, believing that her objection to schools out being on top of the pops helped it get to number one. Mary didn't really like the work of Dennis Potter either, and in August 1989, this got her into a bit of trouble. In an episode of The Psychiatrist's Chair, she confused Potter himself with his main protagonist in The Singing Detective, and claimed that Potter was afflicted with psoriasis after witnessing his mother having an affair with a strange man. Potter's mother won damages, and Mary claimed she'd had a blackout halfway through the interview. Over the years, Mary Whitehouse also took out private prosecutions in a number of cases. One of the more prominent ones was in 1977, against Gay News, over the publication of a poem called The Love That Dares to Speak Its Name, by James Kirkup. The poem was about the sexual fantasies of a Roman soldier about the body of Jesus Christ. Mary brought a prosecution of blasphemous libel against gay news, stating, I simply had to protect our Lord. God, as we all know, is famous for not being able to protect himself against homosexuals, since he went a bit overboard with the whole Sodom and Gomorrah incident. Luckily, Mary had God's back, even though it was firmly pressed against the wall, just in case. Now, I'm clearly taking the piss. And perhaps there should be some mention of the fact that she was just standing up for something she believes in, which is fair enough. If it wasn't for the fact that also in 1977, Mary Whitehouse and the National Viewers and Listeners Association gave Jimmy Savile an award for wholesome family entertainment for his TV show, Jim Will Fix It. She doesn't seem blessed with great judgment now, does she? So you'll have to forgive me if I take her opinions with a tiny bit of the salt that God turned Lot's wife into. Dear Jim, Please, 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 can you fix it for me, for Mary Whitehouse to come back from the dead in order to witness the downfall of obvious paedophile Jimmy Savile. Thank you, Chris Boyle, aged 41 years and two months. Mary retired as president of the NVALA in 1994 and died in 2001 and was buried in Dedham in the churchyard of the parish church of St Mary the Virgin, the world's most famous proponent of holding on tight to your apneys. If Mary was still alive today, she'd probably be having a whale of a time, complaining about too many tits on Game of Thrones 
and seeing Brexit as a way of furthering the moral rearmament movement. After all, no one is more moral than Brexit poster boy Boris Johnson. There is much more to Mary Whitehouse's work, which you should look up if I've piqued your interest. But for now, we'll wrap this up. Thank you once again for listening to Chris Boyle Didn't Know That. And as ever, if you'd like to get in touch with a theme tune or a subject suggestion, you can do so by either finding Chris Boyle Didn't Know That on Facebook, following at Chris Boyle DKT on Twitter, or using the new email address cbdkt at outlook.com. Until next time, you've been listening to Chris Boyle Didn't Know That. But of course, you knew that anyway. Thank you.